Hey guys, Rogue Flamingo here, bringing you my Guild Wars 2 leveling build series, which will feature a video for each of the 9 classes. The reason I'm doing this series is because the vast majority of build videos online seem to be solely focused on endgame meta builds, and I know from my engagement with the Guild Wars community that a lot of you out there want help with some of the more basic elements, so this one is for you guys. In these videos, I'll be going through all of the information you need to make sure your character is as powerful as possible all the way from level 1 to 80. I'll be covering the best weapon types to use for your class, as well as armor stats, runes, utility skills, and specializations. If you've not yet made up your mind which class you want to play, check out the class guide playlist on my channel, where I have a detailed guide on each of the classes to help you make that decision. I'd like to thank you all for your fantastic support I've received on my channel so far, and if you find this content useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to be kept up to date on my latest content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Heroic Flamingo, where I'll be posting regular updates as well as doing gem giveaways for you guys. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are two links in the video description that might interest you. The first one is to sign up for a free Guild Wars 2 account, so if you haven't got an account yet, do give that a click. And the second one is a link to the Guild Wars 2 store page, where you can purchase the Path of Fire expansion and get Heart of Thorns with it for no additional cost. All of these things help support the channel and I thoroughly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now it's time to get into the leveling build for the Warrior. So this is a build that I'm a big fan of. It's a lot of fun to play. It has really high damage, good mobility. Um, survivability is really good as well, to be fair. Uh, if you can give yourself a little bit of extra health, obviously you've got heavy armor. And it's completely melee, so it's a proper traditional tanky warrior build. Um, so if that's the sort of thing you're after, I think you're going to really enjoy it. So I'm going to start with the weapons. So the weapons I'm using are the dual axes. So axe main hand and axe off hand. And then the great sword. So I would say the dual axes is your primary weapon set. It's a must on this build. I definitely wouldn't go anywhere else. If you've not got dual axes, then you're definitely losing a considerable amount of damage. So I wouldn't give any alternatives to that. Uh, the second weapon set, like I say, is the greatsword. Um, there are some alternatives to this. I've seen some builds that use mace and shield, um, or someone might want to use something with a bit more range, like a longbow. Um, but to be honest, I enjoy going full melee with a warrior. I just think it feels right. So I'm going with the greatsword. Um, it's got really good mobility, your, your number 3 and 5 ability is great for moving around, uh, your number 2 ability is really high damage as well. Like I said, you'll be spending probably the majority of your time on the dual axes, but I think the greatsword is a good secondary weapon. Alright, so let's have a look at the skills for the axe then. So you'll unlock these obviously as you level up, so you know when you first start the game maybe just grab a one hand axe or a greatsword. Um, and to be honest, by the time you're level 8, you'll have unlocked all 5 of these skills anyway. Um, so do that first before you start doing anything else. Um, but once you've got all your weapon skills, I'll show you what they'll do. So your number 1 skill on the axe is a chain skill. So make sure you, you try not to interrupt this because this one specifically has got a lot, a lot of the damage is on the, the third hit. So do bear that in mind. So you've got chop, double chop and triple chop, which is... Hit your foe, hit up to basically hit up to three targets in melee range, then um, hit them twice, and then in the final one, uh, the third one, you you hit them three times. So just the damage goes up each time, uh, and that's a pretty good, pretty good move there. Uh, your number two is Cyclone Axe. So this is one you want to use um, whenever it's available. Uh, it's good damage. So this one you spin around and attack all nearby foes, applying vulnerability each hit and gain fury for each foe hit. So, you know, same thing, you're gonna hit up to five targets for a melee range. So do this when you've got a few enemies around you. Um, I mean, it's good because it puts vulnerability on the enemies, meaning all your other skills can do more damage. Uh, but then also it buffs you with fury as well, so you've got extra critical chance. So it's a bit of best of both worlds there. So you might wanna use this with sort of, to start with, stack the vulnerability up so your, your other, uh, other weapon skills will do more damage. So as you can see, that's a pretty cool but yeah it's just a quick little spin it's not like a, a long thing you just spin around you can hit quite a few enemies and do a decent amount of damage so that's a really nice move to stick in there 
Your number number three is throw axe. Uh, so this is throw an axe that cripples foes, dealing bonus damage at lower health thresholds. Um, so this one's not as important. You can just stick it in there from time to time. It's an ammo skill, so you can use it twice. It's got cripple on it, which um, you're probably not too worried about um, if you're going to be doing from melee range. Um, but you know, it's just something you can throw in there and just lob an axe at someone. Why not? Um, to have a little bit of extra damage there, but your other ones are your other weapon skills going to be your priorities. So number four, this is another one you want to use whenever you can. Um, dual strike. So strike your foe with both weapons. Gain quickness for each strike that hits. So as you can see, um, hits up to three enemies from melee range. Quickness is really good because it makes your skills and actions faster. So you can basically do more damage. And this does decent amount of damage as well. So you want to whack this out whenever you can. So bam, like that. Um, and it hits all these enemies in front of you there. So that's a good one. And your number five here. This is an excellent skill. Whirling Axe. So spin and attack nearby foes. And you can move while spinning. So this is the sort of skill that everyone wants. Um, it does good amount of damage to everyone around you. Um, you can move while spinning and it hits up to five targets around you. So you want to do this when you're surrounded by enemies or you can use it to sort of like mow through enemies. So I'll just demonstrate it now. So you press number five, start spinning. And you even have increased movement speed while doing it so you can really get through a lot of enemies. I mean, it, it doesn't just tap them either. It, it does a ton of damage. So that's one of the main reasons why we want the dual axes. It's a really good skill. Obviously, use it whenever it's available. Um, so, with with this weapon set, basically use your number two, four, and five skills whenever they're available. They're your damage skills. Bam, bam, and bam. Those are the ones that can be do a ton of damage. And then you can stick in uh, a uh, a one to cripple them from distance if you really want. But it's not really too useful. And then if, if you know in between you can use your number one ability um, just let the chain play out it's pretty powerful as well um, or you can always switch to great sword um, depending on if these you know if these have only got a couple of seconds left on their cooldown maybe just quickly let a chain play out and then you can use those again because these are going to be your main damage skills okay um, I'll go into the um, professional mechanics later on uh, for each weapon so don't worry about that I'll show you when to use those um, so here we've got the great sword So this is the one we're going with here. So two-handed sword. So it's gonna be all five of your weapon skills here um, So your number one is another chain ability. So you've got great sword swing great sword slice and brutal strike So um, the first one's gonna hit the enemy put some vulnerability on them the Second one's gonna hit them again a bit more vulnerability and then the third one You're gonna hit them with a brutal strike and it's gonna hit up to three targets from melee range um, so if I'm going to chain um, anyone, I'm going to ideally I would chain the. Uh, if I, I'm going to, I would use the axe. But you know, you've got obviously the cooldown on weapon swap. So if you find yourself on the sword and you've utilised your powerful abilities, let the chain play out. Try not to interrupt it, and that does a decent amount of damage as well. It's got a nice big swing on it as well. Um, so you'll be hitting up to three targets around you. Uh, your number two ability here, 100 blades. So this is a really good damage ability, to be fair. There's a ton of damage, um, but it, it's a bit annoying because, you, you know, you're sort of stuck in place while you do it. So it, it does take three and a half seconds to cast, but you're doing damage the whole time. So it could be good to use on a stunned foe or, or you know, but basically if the foe's doing a massive amount of uh, melee damage to you, you've got to be careful because you will be standing still. Um, but it can be really good for damage. So melee range hits up to three targets. So if you move, it will interrupt it. So you have to stand still and just let it play out. Whack, 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 and then big strike at the end. Let it play to the end. Try not to interrupt that because it will be a big, big hit at the end. And it does a ton of damage to be fair. Um, so it is definitely worth using. Just, just be careful because like I said, you can't actually move while you're using it. Your number three ability, um, Whirlwind Attack. Uh, this one's pretty good for, um, uh, for your mobility here. Um, so whirl in a target's direction, slashing foes along your path. So it has up to four impacts, hits up to three targets. And it's also evading while you're doing it. So it, it's basically you can use it instead of a roll. So obviously you're rolling about. But if you've not got your endurance, you can use this. And you'll whirl through enemies, damaging them. But you're also moving to the other side of them and evading attacks while you're doing it. So it's a good skill there. And um, like I said, this is one of the reasons why I've got the great sword Because you know, it increases your mobility and stuff like that. So that's quite nice. Uh, your number four skill, 
Blade Trail. So this is throw your greatsword at your foe so that it returns to you. Crippling foes along the way. So this is very much like that number three skill on the um, on the axe. It's a little bit of a range. So if you find yourself at a distance, at least you can do something. Uh, once again, it cripples them as well from 900 range. So you can just lob your greatsword. There you go, and it, it cripples the enemy and comes back. So, I mean, that's not got too much use in this, but yeah, if you are a range and you want to cripple an enemy, you have got that option as well. And finally, your number five skill on the greatsword is Rush. So charge and strike your foe. Uh, so basically, the, the targeted enemy, whoever you're targeting at the time, you're going to run at them and hit them with a, um, with a, a decent bit of damage. Um, so you can do it from quite far away. So you could use this to enter combat if you wanted to. As you can see, just run to the enemy. Doesn't sort of, unless you have a target to show you. But when you get to that enemy, you're going to do a big uppercut and it does a decent amount of damage. So you could use that to enter combat uh, and then maybe hit them with a bit of a number two. Well, an attack to move your position, switch to your axes and smash them up. As demonstrated. Uh, so that is all of your weapon skills um, for the warrior. Uh, that Those are going to be your main focus um you're going to spend most time doing your weapon skills which you'd expect with a warrior that's what i like about this build it's all about your weapon skills and doing damage through them and then buffing yourself with some of your other skills um and that's what we're going to do now we're going to have a look at the healing utility and elite skills all right so now we're going to have a look at the healing utility and elite skills for the warrior uh, so first up our healing skill there's a couple of options we can go with on this i've gone with mending so this removes conditions and heals yourself. So it's got a decent sized heal um, and you know it's also got that condition cleanse to it. So that's all, all well and good. Um, but one of the main reasons is it's actually got a 15 second cooldown as well. Uh, so you can actually use it quite frequently. So it's got a decent sized heal, not the biggest in the world, but as it's got a 15 second cooldown, it makes it worthwhile along with um, that condition cleanse as well, which can be really useful. So as I can whack that out, and then that's a pretty pretty useful one it's just quite good in combat because sometimes you might use your healing skill but if you take a big hit and your healing skill has got like a 30 second cooldown it can be quite difficult to, to wait that long um so it's just just in anticipation of that but there's a couple of options that you can go with um to the limit the shout healing skill is a good option um that because it heals yourself and regains all your adrenaline which is your bar here which will go in, in a little bit um, so, so that's quite good um, and nearby allies gain endurance as you can see um, it's got a bigger hill on it there it's got uh, the hills about 50% 40-50% bigger than the hill on this one um, which is fair enough but because th this one can be used um, you know twice as often because it's got a 30 second cooldown I mean, I'm inclined to stick with mending, to be fair. See what you think's best. I like, do find that you need a bigger heal, but less frequently, then you can obviously go with that. Um, and if you're not bothered about the condition cleanse. But if a condition cleanse is useful and you want a more frequent heal, then I do recommend going with this. I think it's good while you're leveling as well, getting used to it. And then potentially there is healing signet as well. Um, I generally don't go with this because although it's got a nice passive which regenerates your health like continuously which is useful that the actual heal on it the activate ability is um is a very low heal quite insignificant so um this might be useful if you find that you your health never really goes low um which to be honest you, you probably if you're playing um you know decent level content you'd expect that you prefer the big hill so you can go with that if you just want something that continuously keeps your health up but remember if you use that one you get a really small hill and then for 20 seconds you won't have that continuous hill on you uh, anyway so i'm going to go with mending and i recommend you guys do uh, for your free utility skills here first up i've got the shout skill for great justice so this is just for buffing yourself it's an ammo skill so you've got a couple of counts it's grant fury and might to yourself and allies it's really useful because it's only got um, uh, not too long a second cooldown. Count recharge is 25 seconds, but you can use it twice, so it's pretty useful. Um, so you get Fury, which gives you extra critical chance, and Might, which gives you extra power, uh, which is obviously what you're going for with this build. Want to do as much damage as possible, crit as much as possible. So these are the kind of buffs you're after. Um, I would say basically just use this skill 
whenever you can um, well whenever this runs out basically so don't use it when you can use it again because obviously it's got um, it's got account recharge there but you can use it whenever you run out obviously the might last quite a long time um, but whenever you need that buff you can just work that out and as you can see overall you can keep that up pretty much all the time uh, so that's just a useful buff like I said all the damage that we're doing is focused around the weapon skills which is nice and these are just to support that so that's just a good buff skill that I'd recommend going with now you can see we've got a couple of signets here for our other utility skills we've got signet of might and signet of fury so signet of might the passive is that it improves your power so that means you're just going to do more damage at all times and then when you activate it, it uh, your attacks are unblockable and you gain might. Um, I would say that you don't want to activate it. Uh, you pretty much want this here for the power. And let me just quickly show you this other one. So Signet Fury, the passive is it improves your precision. Uh, which means your, your crit chances increase as long as you have this on your bar. And then if you activate it, you gain adrenaline and improve your precision and ferocity um, for about 4 seconds. Um, so these two i would say avoid using the active to be honest these are here just to buff you to give you more damage and more crit chance um and it just supports the damage from your weapons uh, obviously if you really feel that you need it you can always use them but then for the cooldown 25 seconds and 20 seconds there you're going to lose that passive bonus and be doing less damage so i definitely recommend leaving these here it makes this build quite simple to play as well especially while you're leveling because these just sit here and, and give you a passive boost, you don't need to activate them. This one you just use whenever you can to just buff yourself. Uh, so the utility skills don't require a lot of a lot of work there. Um, so it's quite quite a, a nice way to do it and you can just focus on doing as much damage as possible with your weapons. Which So I think it, it works quite well for the warrior. Uh, I think it's a good, um, a good way of doing it. Obviously there are other options, you can have a look at some of the uh, other signets. Um, like Doliac Signet, if you if you need to take less incoming damage, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. You've got a few utilities here, like pushing back foes, immobilizing foes, um, which isn't that useful because you're melee. Um, obviously, if you're using a ranged weapon, that would be quite useful. Um, you've obviously got some banners here that you can place down. But I like to have a bit more mobility with the worry. Should be cutting through these people, moving on to the next, cutting through to the next. So banners aren't great for that. So I'm not really going to recommend them. I think that having basically these passives along here and this buff, I think it fits the build really well. So I'm happy to recommend them. And finally, we have the elite skill. You can see we've gone with another signet. So this is signet of rage. So the passive is it grants adrenaline. So just continuously grants adrenaline so this bar will be going up um, which is good and then the active ability is that you gain fury might and swiftness so as you can see it's 25 seconds of fury 37 and a half seconds of five stacks of might swiftness for 25 seconds so there's a lot of um a lot of things there that it buffs you with uh, this signet i'm going to give you the opposite advice to the other ones this one you want to activate whenever you can um, this is here for the active, not for the passive. Obviously, I'm not going to say no to a bit of a passive, but to be honest, you want to activate as much as possible, especially if you're in a um, quite a hard fight. It's going to give you a really good buff, like a, a big um, like increase in damage for a decent amount of time as well. So I recommend, yeah, activating that whenever you can to just buff yourself up. So just to summarize that, you're going to be using your number seven and, and your elite basically to buff yourself up whenever you can to keep yourself strong and these ones are just going to leave to buff you at all times and then your number six you've got a nice condition cleanse and decent heal here that you can use every 15 seconds so that's going to help you stay alive so overall i think this is a really good um setup here um and to be honest there are obviously as always there are alternatives uh, so i'm not saying this is the one the skills you have to go with but i think it complements well what we're going for here which is a weapon focused warrior build focused on melee damage and just doing what warriors should do and just smashing up enemies with heavy armor and massive swords and axes so i don't think you can argue with that so that's everything for the healing utility and elite skills uh, so now we're going to have a look at the weapon and armor stats okay so now it's time to look at the weapon and armor stats for the warrior 
Okay, so um, as you'd probably expect with this build, it, the emphasis is going to be on power. We want to get as much power as we can uh, while still obviously being able to stay alive. Uh, and that's obviously a balance that differs from player to player. Um, some might be, some players might be more adept at you know dodging and evading attacks, therefore not having to worry too much about their health and their toughness. But um, so there isn't a you know a set way of doing this. Um, but I'll show you what I what I recommend. So obviously power is going to be your main stat. So when you start leveling up and you start getting some gear that has um, uh, you know some stats on it, power is what you want. So when you've got one stat, just get it with power. I mean because at that point the content shouldn't be too difficult and power means you're going to kill enemies faster and you're going to level quicker and probably find the content more enjoyable. So definitely just power. Anything that doesn't have power on it, then you can just throw it away. When you start getting into a two stat territory, you have to start thinking about what, at that stage, what you feel you need. Do you feel that you, you're too squishy? Then you might need some vitality, you might need some toughness. Um, just to confirm, vitality gives you extra health. Toughness uh, gives you extra armor. And obviously power, extra damage. Uh, so you might want to consider that then. Obviously you can start getting into precision, which is critical chance. Um, but obviously until you get to the free stat, uh, where I'd normally recommend mostly power, precision and ferocity then it can be a bit bit awkward because if you have loads of precision but no ferocity you're going to have high crit chance but low crit damage and vice versa you're going to have really high crit damage but you're not going to crit very often so those two you really want in tandem so what I would say is power, precision, ferocity uh, for the main here so all of my armour has power, precision, ferocity as you can see um, my weapons both have power, precision, and ferocity as well. Um, buffing that up, it's obviously just the maximum amount of damage. But I felt that I needed a little bit of extra health um, and armor on this character, simply because I'm going to be in melee range all the time. Um, so because of that, I've gone with power, toughness, and vitality uh, with the two rings and the amulet along here. So you can see with also the Azerite Jewel as well, which gives you vitality, vitality, power and toughness. And then across here, I've gone Power, Precision, Frosty again as well. So basically Power, Precision, Frosty on everything along here, along here. And then just along these three here, I've added Power, Vitality and Toughness. And just that small amount has made a decent amount of difference actually. I think it added about 3000 health here at level 80. So it makes a decent amount of uh, difference and just sort of puts you over over the edge, just making you a little bit more tanky. So I'm not saying you need to do that. You could go power, precision, frosty, the whole thing. And that will obviously maximize your damage as much as physically possible. Um, but if you feel that you need more survivability, then always tweak that. You can always stick these stats in. You know, if you needed more, maybe put power, uh, maybe put toughness and vitality along these as well. Uh, and I think that would probably be enough. I wouldn't recommend um, you know putting vitality and toughness on all of this because you're going to reduce your uh, damage so much that it's going to be sort of counterproductive because obviously uh, with a lot of power precision toughness you'll be killing your enemies quick enough that you just quite often won't have to worry too much about your health and that's kind of the point whereas if you if you put too much into it yeah you'll you'll never die but it'll take you ages to kill the enemy and and it, as this is a leveling build um the quicker you kill enemies the um the quicker you're going to level which is why predominantly these leveling builds are just going to be power builds uh, but that's what i'd recommend obviously just work out what you need this works well for me uh, i i've got it to the point where i'm doing so much damage and you don't really notice much of a drop off just by changing these just for that extra few thousand pounds of health uh, uh, extra few thousand health and a little bit of armor as well so that's what i'd recommend on the weapon and armor stats for the warrior um, so the next thing we're going to go on to are the traits and specializations Okay, so time to look at the traits and specializations for the warrior. Okay, so having a look. So obviously you've got three uh, specialization slots. Um, the first one you'll unlock at level 21. The second one you'll unlock at level 45. And the third one you won't unlock until level 71. Um, and there are five um, you know, different specializations to choose from. And it is a really important choice. So this is sort of like the hidden stuff in the background that you, you, you know, you maybe don't realize affects your build a lot. So to be honest, these choices are really important. So, you know, don't just 
stick it in wherever you think it should go you know do put some thought into it um, so what I'm recommending here is once you get to level 21 100% go with the strength um, specialization tree this is what you want to start with um, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere else for this build so definitely strength wants to be the first one you go with and let's have a look why okay so the passives on the strength tree are reckless impact which damage foes at the end of your dodge roll gain might for each foe struck by this attack so this just means that you know whenever you're dodge rolling you're just gonna be doing some extra damage to the enemies so that's pretty cool you got burst skills restore endurance on hit um so that's pretty good obviously we haven't really gone into burst skills yet um we'll do that in a professional mechanics bit but that is useful believe me and then you've got pinnacle of strength which might apply to you grants more power uh, so that's good so it's a lot of what we're doing is going to be stacking might on us and this just means that that's going to give us even more damage so that's a really good passive to have and with regards to the options we've got we've gone middle 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 and this is restorative strength so using a heal skill grants might um, so that's good that links in with this which gives which makes might even better and obviously because we've uh, we can use this more often it's got a 15 second cooldown rather than the 30 second cooldown one this means we'll be able to put might on ourselves more often so that's just another reason to go with that um, you've got forceful great sword so gain power and a chance to gain might on critical strike double these bonuses while wielding a great sword or spear great sword and spear skills recharge faster so this obviously buffs the uh, buffs the great sword but generally just gives you uh, you know um, chance to critical strike uh, or a chance to gain might on critical strike so once again it's all it's all about building up that might keeping it up and just uh, making sure you do as much damage as possible obviously if you don't decide to go with the great sword and you want to use an alternative then you're probably going to want to look at one of these other ones here um, but as we've gone with the great sword this is definitely a must-have trait and the final one here is might makes right so gain health and endurance whenever you apply might to yourself so once again makes that even better so um you're going to get a bit of health and endurance every time you put might on yourself which is going to be all the time so that's just going to help with your survivability so for our second um specialization tree that we're going to unlock at level 45 once again i'm going to go uh, and say you definitely want to get this one you definitely want to go discipline as your uh, second uh second tree so strength and discipline as your first two 100% um, I'm going to recommend those I don't recommend any alternatives uh, for the first two so let's have a little look why so our passives on discipline we've got um, versatile rage which is gain adrenaline on weapon swap uh, so whenever we swap between our weapons here yeah it's just going to boost our adrenaline bar here which is useful um, fast hands weapon swapping recharges faster so recharge time five seconds so that's like you know that's quite significant um that means we're going to be able to swap between our weapons more often uh, which is going to be really useful especially because you know you're going to sort of be using your number two four five it's only going to take a you know a couple of seconds to do that and you can swap back to your great sword use your powerful abilities and that swap back and considering we're not really using these for damage um it's quite useful because you're going to be able to use your weapon skills more often so that's definitely one you're going to want to go with and then we've got here versatile power so gain might on weapon swap burst skills gain reduced recharge so there you go we've already said we're going to be swapping weapons a lot um it, and we're going to be gaining might when we do that which links in with all our might buffs up here and um burst skills gain reduced recharge which is always useful as well so with regards to our um our choices on the discipline tree we've gone middle bottom bottom which is warriors sprint so run faster while wielding melee weapons and deal increased strike damage while you have swiftness uh, movement skills break immobilization when used so there you go so movement speed increases 25 percent while wielding melee weapons which obviously with what we've gone with which will be all the time increased damage while you have swiftness um, movement skills break immobilization that was useful if you noticed on here we've got like uh, removes immobilization on two of these because these are movement skills on our, our bar here so that really helps with our mobility so that's another reason to go with the great sword there um so i would recommend that and then next up we've got brawler's recovery which is remove conditions when you swap weapons 
Uh, so once again, you can see it's all on the same sort of vein. So we're going to be taking conditions off ourselves just with those regular weapon swaps. And finally, we've got burst mastery. So burst skills deal more damage, grant swiftness, and restore a portion of adrenaline spent. So adrenaline restored 33%, damage increased 7%, and um, they're going to grant swiftness as well, um, which I think we, we buffed our swiftness back here as well didn't we uh, yeah increase damage while you have swiftness so it links in with that once again um, so that's kind of what you want to do with your traits you want to do things that sort of like link together and they stack up and up and up like we've done with the might and now you'll, you'll have like constant might and the might has been buffed so you know it ups your damage by even more than it normally would so you don't want to choose like decent traits but that don't link together at all and then you'll just have a few good things rather than building it up and just focusing on a few things and making those things like as powerful as possible which is kind of what you want to do okay so for your third specialization which i said might be a little while away um because you don't unlock it to level 71 but it's good to you know plan ahead and see what it's going to be um so like i said strength and discipline 100 percent your first and second so don't change those uh the third one we can be a bit more flexible i've gone with defense and i'll show you why but other valid options you can go with arms and you can go with tactics they are both uh, there are both variants um, of this where you can use those um, which are useful but to be fair I like going with defense on this one um, I think you know what it does is it means that you know it helps you with survivability a little bit it means that you can uh, focus your stats more on the power precision frosty and do as much damage as possible and gives us a few um, good extra things as well which I'm going to go through now Okay, so our passives on this are Fixed Skin, Reduce Incoming Damage While Your Health Is Above The Threshold. Uh, so Threshold 75%, uh, so as long as your health is above that, you can have 5% reduced damage, which is good. Uh, adrenal Health, so Gain Health Based On Adrenaline Spent. So this is really good, obviously we're going to be spending adrenaline a lot, I'll go into that in the next bit. Um, but you're going to get uh, Health Gain per adrenaline spent so that's really good for helping you uh, stay alive so that's one of the main reasons for going with this tree and then you've got hardened armor so gain resolution when you block or are struck by a critical hit strike damage is reduced by a percentage while you have resolution okay so when you so when you're struck by a critical hit or you block you're gonna you're gonna get resolution which means incoming condition damage decreased by 33% and damage reduction of 10% as well. Uh, so that's all of the passives. So let's have a look at our choices on the defense tree. So we've gone with bottom, top, mid middle, and that gives us Cole the Weak, which increases strike damage dealt to weakened foes. Striking a foe below the health threshold inflicts weakness. Um, so as you can see, as long as they're below 50% health, hitting them is going to inflict weakness, um, which is good, but also when they have weakness, uh, increases the damage on them by 10%. So basically anyone below 50% health, we're gonna put weakness on them and then do 10% more damage to them. And obviously we've got quite a few things like that which are putting 10% here, 10% there, adds up a lot and then you end up just doing a ton of damage which is what this build is all about. So here we've got lesser endure pain. So take no damage from attacks. Um, oh sorry, so let me just the first bit, defy pain. So cast lesser endure pain when struck while below the health threshold so whenever you're, health, you're struck below 50 percent health um you're going to cast this which is take no damage from attacks and you are still susceptible to conditions and control effects for four seconds and it also breaks stun so that's really good actually really good defensive ability there to help you stay alive um basically whenever you know if you're struck below 50 percent health so if you're getting sort of close to uh being in a bit of a bad situation this will just help you uh stay alive or you can cast all of your skills for that four seconds while you're taking no damage and finally, we've got Cleansing Ur, which is gain adrenaline when hit. Uh, remove a condition for every bar of adrenaline spent when you hit with a burst skill. So that's really good. So um, a lot of this is about um, boosting up your adrenaline as much as possible. Um, so we can use our burst skills, which we'll go through in a minute. And um, it also removes a condition as well. Um, so we'll just keep those off of us. So once again, just helping us stay alive. So this is a really good bar here just for helping you stay alive. So just to recap, yep, strength, definitely go with that as your first one. Discipline, 100% is your second one. Uh, and then we third one, you can either choose 
you, I went with defense, good for staying alive. I like it with the warrior because especially if you're going double uh, melee weapons like I've got, you know, you want that thing to help you stay alive in that close combat. But arms and tactics are both valid options and there are builds that utilize those. So um, that's always an option. Okay, so that's everything for the traits and specializations. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the profession mechanics. Okay, so now let's actually talk about the profession mechanics, which I've alluded to a couple of times so far, which is the adrenaline and the burst skills. So your adrenaline bar is along here. Um, you can see you've got 30 adrenaline that you can get up to. Adrenaline is produced in combat, so when you're attacking enemies. Obviously, when we were going through our specialization trees, there was quite a few traits that we used which buffed this. For example, we're going to get adrenaline when we get hit and stuff like that. Um, we're going to get extra adrenaline back when we use our burst skill so there's quite a few things uh, that we're going to help to get this up as quickly as possible and that's one of our aims is to just utilize this as much as we possibly can um, so the the premise is that you build up adrenaline while you fight and you can spend that adrenaline on your burst skill your burst skill is like an extra weapon skill so it's defined by what weapon you use so we've got eviscerate here on the axis so Eviscerate is a burst skill and you leap at your foe with a devastating attack. Effects increase with adrenaline level and gain might if this attack hits. So once again, putting might on ourselves even more, which is going to buff our damage. Um, it removes immobilize as well because we've got that uh, trait as well for our movement abilities. And it's good because you leap at the foe, so it's a bit of a gap closer at the same time as well. It's only got a range of 300, so don't try and do it from miles away, otherwise you just waste it. Uh, but a little bit of a, a jump at them and, and a big hit as well does a lot of damage. Um, let's just have a quick look at the greatsword. So with the greatsword you've got arcing slice. So deliver a circular attack to foes around you and gain fury. Deal more damage to foes with low health. Okay, so this one is good um, for a finisher as well. So the damage is increased for enemies under 50% health. And depending on the level of adrenaline, um, one or two, one, two or three bars, you'll get your extra critical chance for longer. So that's pretty good. What um, what our aim is with this profession mechanic is we want to obviously build up adrenaline as quickly as possible, which is obviously shown with the traits we've chosen. Um, and you'll do that literally just by fighting. So just fight, watch your bar fill up. It'll fill up nice and quick. And as soon as this hits three bars, you want to use your burst skill don't use it at one or two it because you'll be building it up so quickly you want to just get it straight up to three bars and then use it for maximum damage because it's got a six second cooldown and hope and you know hopefully within those six seconds you'll get this pretty much filled up again anyway so you're gonna be able to use this quite a lot out of the two weapons we've got the burst skill you want to be using mostly is eviscerate it's a really powerful ability so i would recommend using that but obviously if that's on cooldown or if you've got this weapon out uh, you don't want your adrenaline to go to waste, so as soon as you hit 30, you can use that one as well. Another decent ability. Um, so, as you can see, yeah, you want to get it up and just use it whenever you can. Um, we've, we've managed to reduce the recharge on it as well for our traits, so you can use it rather frequently. And it's just a really powerful ability. It complements, um, you know, all your weapon abilities here. Just make sure you keep an eye on it. Don't let it sit at 30 and go up and up and up. Because, like I said, it won't go above 30. Any adrenaline you earn above that will just be a waste. Uh, so make sure you just utilise this as much as you possibly can. Okay, so that's just a quick one. That's everything for the uh, professional mechanics. Just make sure you're building up your adrenaline. Make sure you use your F1 ability whenever you can. Predominantly eviscerate. And that's just going to really help you uh, just... Bring down the uh, enemy's health even quicker. And when I show you a combat demonstration soon, you'll be amazed like how much damage this build can do. It is really fun as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just do a quick build summary for you guys before we wrap the video up. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick build summary for you guys before we wrap this video up. So let's have a quick look. So first of all, we went uh, from a weapon perspective. We've gone with the dual axes here as our main damage dealers. Um, with the great sword as our second um, choice here. So in terms of weapon skills, we've got a decent chain ability here, which you don't want to interrupt. But your main damage ability is two, four, and five. So use those as much as possible on cooldown. Switch into your other weapon, another decent chain ability. Try not to interrupt that. 
Um, your number two, loads and loads of damage, but you have to stand still for three and a half seconds, so do bear that in mind. Three and five, good for mobility, and then four, yeah, you can throw a great sword at someone. Probably looks cooler than it actually is. Um, with regards to our uh, healing utility and elite skills, we've gone with mending here because it's got really quick cooldown and condition cleanse, as well as uh, granting us some might because of our traits. Um, we've got a nice buff here for great justice. Use that whenever you can to keep those buffs up on yourself. Um, your eight and nine here, signet of might, signet of fury. We're, they're there for the passives, improve your power, improve your precision, which is damage and um, critical hit chance. Try not to use the active abilities. Um, you'll, you'll get more benefit of just keeping them on your bar for passives. And for our uh, elite, we went with Signet of Rage, um, which grants uh, adrenaline as a passive, but we want to use it for the active. So use this whenever you can to give yourself a nice big buff. Um, with the armor stats, uh, power is the emphasis all the way up. Add some extra vitality and toughness if you need to stay alive. But you know, by the time you get here to level 80, power precision frosty on your armor and weapons should be fine. And then you can stick some vitality and toughness over here. I've just done the rings and the amulet, but you could also add some here if you needed them. Um, but mostly we want to be focusing on damage, so bear that in mind. And uh, with regards to the uh, traits, we've gone strength, discipline, defense for these specializations. Um, these two are musts and defense you could change to arms or tactics if you want to go a different route But I think this is really good it helps with your survivability um, So this is definitely the way you want to go for that and with the professional mechanics you want to use your um, Burst abilities as much as possible specifically eviscerate on the axes here So loads of our traits will help build up the adrenaline and as soon as that gets to 30 Use your f1 uh, just to maximize your damage as much as possible and as soon as that comes back to 30 again, three bars, use it again. Uh, so this is just the basic premise for this build. Um, I think it's a really fun build to play. It's just a classic warrior, which I really love about it. I don't want to use like a bow or something like that on the warrior. I'm too much of a traditionalist. Uh, so I think this will make a lot of you guys happy. Uh, you just being able to like smash people apart while wearing like heavy armor and stuff like that. Hopefully get like a cool skin like this. So so your, your guy can look pretty awesome as well. And obviously like great swords and stuff normally have the best skin. So that's always uh, good as well. So um, yeah, that's everything for this build. Obviously, if you've got any more questions about it, leave it in the comments below. Um, I'm just going to leave you now with a combat demonstration. Just so you can see some of the basics of how it works. So thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date. And I will see you later. For great justice.
Penalty! Oh. 